minutes to conclude with this witness. Uh, we will deal with the governor's lawyer when uh, he's on his feet. Much obliged, Mr. Speaker. You have been told at paragraph 1.1.11 1 .1 of the governor's response that there is no evidence linking Kenneth Guantai to misuse of county funds and his name does not appear in the IFMI's extract. Is that defense of the governor consistent with the evidence on record? No, because uh, the evidence is there for to see on pages 20, 22, and 24 of the IFMI's extract. So who again is Kenneth Guantai? Brother to the governor. So when the governor says he doesn't appear on the IFMI as receiving money and it's there in black and white, is that a serious defense? It is not, since it is a misrepresentation of facts. It is said that you, sir, you yourself of all people, made a Facebook post defending the governor that you now are asking the Senate to remove from office. What is your answer? Yes, I did, but um, uh, my support doesn't uh, give the governor leeway to breach the law. And also, the support came in before I was seized of the facts before this uh, Senate and the Assembly. Did you have the benefit of this extractive news at the time you made this Facebook post? No. Did you have the benefit of the documents down before the Senate when you made this Facebook post? No. This one we can skip. It is said, sir, that again you, the Speaker, and Honorable DMK, made contributions to Okolea. You contributed the Andrew Shillings, one of you gave a goat, and here you are complaining about Okolea. What is your response? Even if it were true, it doesn't explain uh, what kind of government vehicles were doing at an Okolea rally. Uh, let's begin. First of all, is it true? Uh, did, did you co contribute to that Okolea kitty? And did the Speaker and the Honorable DMK make contributions to it? I may not speak for the others, but uh, we, I did. You did? Yes. Would the fact that you made that contribution diminish the gravity of the offenses the governor is said to have committed in those rallies? It doesn't in any way. The governor says she has a video in which she gives a disclaimer that Okolea is separate from the official functions. Is that a valid answer to? No, it is inconsistent with the evidence that you have adduced. She tells you if county officials attended the Okolea rally, they did so in their private capacities as members of Baite Fellowship. Who runs this Baite Fellowship? It's the governor of Meru and uh, her spouse. So the governor and her spouse run a fellowship which is attended by, she admits, county staff attended or collar Is that a valid defense? It is not valid. Doesn't that defense actually confirm the involvement of county staff in Okolea operations contrary to promises made by this Senate less than a year ago? Yes, it does. The governor says she didn't misrepresent her relatives as a technical team. Does the evidence support her? It does it not. Does the record say in black and white that they are designated as a technical team? They were designated as a technical team and by none other than the county secretary of the government of Meru and the end of public service. The governor says she did not make this China trip because the relatives she sent to her an advanced team who discovered the company was not linked to the Chinese government. 
to the best of your knowledge, did the governor seek any travel clearance? No, she did not. Is that consistent with the governor who actually intended to travel in the first place? It is inconsistent because in the first place, uh, the governor should have been in the letter or in the list that was sent to seek for clearance to travel. She tells you no public funds were lost on the trip to China. What is your response? Um, even though or in whatever case, or even there was no money that was lost, uh, the county lost a great opportunity. Considering that it is a high cancer, uh, high uh, incidence cancer in Meru, the governor, lo the county lost a great opportunity to address that problem for the great people of Meru. The governor draws a account. So it's uh, public knowledge that whenever you travel, even if the uh, cost of the trips are, are governed by the company, uh, those who are traveling are paid a quarter per diem. Would you consider the loss of opportunity greater than perhaps even the loss of money? Yes. Even the incidence of cancer in Meru? Yes, I would. You, you are told, Mr. Chair, let my colleague exhaust the remaining bit. I've been studying for quite some time. Uh, Honorable Speaker, my name is Boniface Mawera. And I will proceed with the exam in chief. Uh, Mr. Mavera, <coughs> turn with me to page 347 of the governor's bundle. What letter do you see at page 347? It's a letter from the uh, Office of the Council Secretary uh, in regards to deployment of uh, Nefat Kingdom M. Okay. Did the County Secretary have the powers to appoint Nefat Kingdom as Director of External Partnerships? unless the powers are delegated by the County Public Service Board, which is not indicated. Has the Governor annexed any authority to show that his powers were delegated by the County Public Service Board? None whatsoever. Is this the same Nefert who, who was in the Chinese trip? He is the same person. And the brother in law to the Governor? Yes. Okay. Turn with me to page 287 of our volume 2. I think it, it begins at page 284 of our volume 2. What document do you see there? Is an advert from uh, by the office of the county public service board. In which office? Office of the governor. So the, the advertisement is for recruitment in the office of the governor. Yes. Turn now to page. Honourable uh, speaker, you can turn with me to page two eighty seven. At page two eighty seven, you can see the adver the advertisement for the recruitment of the Director of External Affairs? Yes. Which job group? Job group R. Okay. The qualifications? The requirements for appointment rather? Served in a comparable and relevant position for a minimum period of five years. I Experience of five years, right? Yes. In a comparable and relevant position for five years? Yes. And a university degree and a Roman two, B2? Yes. 
okay and turn with me again to page 89 of of our volume 2 still volume 2 it begins at page 88 after that advertisement the county public service board short list this is a short list for the, the officers in the office of the governor correct yes it is and at page 89 we can see the persons who are shortlisted for the position of director external linkages yes they are indicated and the name of nefert is not among those people it is not what is the date on page 88 of our bundle what is the date of that shortlist it is on 6th September 2023. 6th September 2023. The letter we saw on the governor's bundle at page 347. I want you to clarify the date. When is it dated? Just a moment. It's dated on 9th March 2023. 9th March of 2023? Yes. And you've confirmed a moment ago that the county secretary did not have powers to appoint this director? Yes, I confirm. Is it your evidence that the county secretary in so doing was usurping the powers of the county public service board? Yes, they did. Okay. At page two, at page two eighty-seven of our bundle, we have seen that the position, or rather, the job for director, is job group R. Correct? Yes, it is. Turn with me to page three forty-three of the governor's bundle. What document has the governor produced in that bundle? It's a no file of appointment letter. Who is it addressed to? Effort in, in paragraph one, what is the job group of Nefert Kenya Meme? He is employed in the position of pharmaceutical technologist job group H. So, Mr. Mawira, could a person who is employed who was employed rather in job group H be appointed to act as a director in job group R? No, that is an illegality. What is the possible explanation for this irregularity? You are not supposed to uh, be appointed to act in any position that you are not qualified to. Would you say that the only reason why Nefert is clearly favored and the jumps from job group H to job group R is because he has a relationship with the governor's sister. Yes, I can confirm. Okay. And with me to page 384. 384. Honorable Speaker, you can turn with me to page 384 of our volume 2. We can begin at 295, 295 and 296 of our volume 2. What document is at page 295 and 296? It's a notice of redeployment uh, from uh, the office of the governor. It is issued by which office? Office of the governor. Is it actually a redeployment or Appointment of chief officers. It's appointment. 
and I remember you, you during your examination in chief by Mr. Mozambi, you said that the, for the appointment of chief officers, the county public service board must be involved. Yes, it must. And also, it is actually the county public service board that recommends the appointments to the governor. It recommends and it also creates those offices. It creates those offices, advertise, uh, advertise, they recruit. Yes. They, and then they, they forward the names or they submit the names to the office of the governor for formal appointment. That is the procedure. So could the governor purport through the county secretary, because at page 296, the letter is signed by the county secretary for the governor. Could the governor purport to appoint these chief officers without the involvement of the county public service board? No, that is illegal. And as a county public service, as a county public service board actually disowned those appointments? Yes, they have. That is evidence, the evidence right? is on page. And down to the 84 for purposes of uh, in the interest of time. The 84 of our volume 2 on the speaker. Yes, the evidence is on page 384 on a letter addressed to the clerk of the county assembly. Who has, who has written that letter? In whose letterhead is it issued? Office of the County Public Service Board and signed by the Secretary or the CEO of the Mayor County Public Service Board with the CPA, Virginia Kawira. At paragraph 4 of that letter, what does the board say, the County Public Service Board? It states that the board is the appointing authority according to section 64 of the of County Governments Act. The board, however, was not involved in the appointment of the acting chief officers as per the act. As per, so the, the board actually confirms that it was not involved in these appointments? Yes. Is that an irre irre irregularity? It is an irregularity. At page 295, I'll take you back to page 295 of our volume 2, Honorable Speaker. And specifically, page, 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 uh, the, the number 18 on page 296, the appointment of Kenneth Moetiriongo. Is he appointed to an, in an acting capacity or a substantive appointment? It is a substantive appointment since it is not indicated if it's either it's not indicated if it's a, in an acting capacity. Would such a substantive appointment require the approval of the county assembly? It requires. Was that approval obtained? No. And for argument's sake, Mr. Mawira, the governor has said in a response that it is actually the county secretary is the one who made this appointment. As by law, the county government act, can a county secretary appoint chief officers? It's not possible and even uh, it's still contrary to what we have because the letter is signed by the county secretary for our uh, excellency the governor. For the governor? Yes. So could the governor lawfully even if we are to assume that she delegated his authority, could the governor lawfully delegate the mandate to appoint chief officers to a county secretary? The law does not allow that to envisage the same. Is a statutory mandate to appoint chief officers not vested in the person of the governor? It is. Still on these two pages, page 295 and 296 of our volume 2, who is qualified? I want you to explain to the Honorable Speaker and to the Honorable Senators, who is qualified to act as a chief officer? According to? I'm asking from the persons who have been appointed here as chief officers. For example, you can turn to page 296, number 17. We see the Tobun Kanata to move from Meru municipality to Department of Lands to perform the functions of chief officer. And my question to you is, can a person who is not a chief officer be appointed to act as a chief officer in another department? No, because it requires a vetting and approval by the county assembly. So it is your evidence that only a person who has been appointed, who is already a chief officer in the first place, can be appointed to act as a chief officer in another, in another department? Yes. And by corollary, in the national government, only a PS can be appointed to act in another state department? That is true. So if you are not a chief officer, in the first place, having been vetted and approved by the county assembly, you cannot be appointed to act as a chief officer in another department. That is true. So, 
What would you say then of the appointment of Kitobu Kanata at number 17? It's an illegal appointment. Number 15 of Christopher Mugunda? It's also illegal. Number 2? That is uh, the, the nephew, Edwin Murayiri. It's in contravention of the law. Who is Edwin Murayiri at number 2, page 295? The nephew to the spouse of the governor. So, is it regular for a person who is already in another department that is married to service as a semi-autonomous government agency, is it regular for them to move from a saga to the public service? It's irregular. And, and take over the role of acting chief officer? It's irregular. Okay. And from the governor's bundle? At page 348, turn with me to page 348. That is the appointment letter of Edwin Murangiri. Yes, it is. In 2017. Yes. And he was in job group K. Yes. So is it regular for a person in job group K, just as I've seen for effort, for a person in job group H to jump the stairs or the ladder and to become a chief officer, which is the highest rank in the county public service? Is it regular? No, it is not. Okay. Honorable Speaker and the Senators and the Honorable Senators, turn with me to page 2, page 200, page 360 of our volume 2, actually from page 359, I'm sorry Honorable Speaker, from page 359. that the governor has appointed a bloated workforce, specifically in the office of the governor. Yes, it's true. And from this, from page 359, at the top of the page, this document that is provided by the County Public Service Board, what is the title? Summary of appointed persons in the office of the governor from August 2022 to date. So these are persons appointed in the office of the governor from August 2022 when she took over the office to date? Yes. And by today, it is as at 9th of October of this year? Yes, uh, because this was when the County Public Service Board gave us this list. And the County Public Service Board communicated to the Assembly? Yes. By the letter appearing on page 354, Honorable Speaker, page 354 of our Volume 2. This is a letter by the County Public Service Board attaches a list of all the appointed officers in the office of the governor. At page, at page 360, at page 360, how many information officers can you count? At page 360. They are 10 in number. 10 in number. Is it reasonable for a governor to have 10 information officers? It's not reasonable. And I remember during uh, cross examination, uh, examination in chief, you said on page 361 and 362, there are 38 cleaners in the office of the governor. Yes, they are. Turn with me to page, Honorable Speaker, turn with me to page 369, 370 over volume 2. At page 3, what documents are there from page 369 to page 370? They are pay slips. Pay slips for what job designations? Public communications, communications officer. 
the job designation is public communications officer. Yes. And how many are they? There are six in number. There are six in number. Honorable Speaker, turn with me to page to page two sixty one of our volume two. Okay. There is a notice for shortlist and interview schedule. Correct? Yes. At page at page three, uh, at page two sixty eight. At page two sixty eight. How many uh, positions rather are advertised for? Because there is a short list for public communication officers two and three. The ones who are short listed are seventeen in number. The ones who are short listed are seventeen in number. Nineteen. 19 in number. 19 in number? Yes. But Turn with me to page 293. 293 of our volume 2. The document begins at page. The, the document begins at page 284, Honorable Speaker. It is an advertisement for recruitment to the Office of the Governor. At page 293, how many positions have been advertised? Only three positions. Only three positions. What is the job designation? Uh, public Communications Officer 2 and Public Communications Officer 3. So for public communication officer two and three, only three vacancies are available. Yes. Okay. And at page two sixty eight, we've seen that nineteen persons are shortlisted. Yes. At page two sixty eight of our volume two. Yes. Okay. Then turn with me to page still on, the, uh, still on our volume to pages three six to page three sixty one of our volume two. And I want to. And I want you to read out, or rather to count, the public communication officers who are appearing in that page. That is number 60, number 67, number 68, and 69. How many are those? They are four. They are four. They are four officers, right? Yes. Who have been recruited as per this summary provided by the County Public Service Board for all the staff in the office of the governor from August last year to, to date. Yes. Okay. So there are actually three vacancies. You will agree with me. From yes. page two ninety three, there are only three vacancies. Yes. Nineteen are shortlisted on two page two sixty eight. Yes. Four are appearing on that have been like, recruited. Yes, four have been recruited. As per the summary by the County Public Service Board. Yes. So one extra person was recruited over and above the vacancies that are available. That's true. Of the four, how many appear in that shortlist? The four are, are, are Caberia, uh, number 60, and I will speak on page 361 of our volume two. There is Caberia Andrew Bundy. There is uh, Moridi Samuel Moridi, Michobu Dominic Moreke, and Kambi. Christas Manera. How many how many actually appear in the short list at page two sixty eight? To save the to, to save to save the time, it is only one. Caberia Andrew Bundy. Caberia Andrew Bundy is the only public communication officer who was actually shortlisted and recruited. That's true. So the other three who have been Hired were not even shortlisted. Yes. Okay. Turn with me now to page 369 and 370. 
and you will see the pay slips. How many pay slips can you count for public communication officers? Is there 369 and 370? At 369, there is one for Andrew Kaberia Bundi. Correct? Yes. There is one for Tony Mbrugo. Yes. There is one for Purite Kajuju. Yes. There is one for Erge Kunda. Yes. One for Frida Rakturi Kinoti. Yes. And one for Naomi Kinya. Yes. So six persons are being paid. Yet there are only three vacancies. And of the 19 who are shortlisted, only one was hired. That is true. Is that not a, a glaring irregularity? It is a glaring irregularity on the part of the office of the governor. Okay. Council, your time is up. Uh, so can you wind up, please? Very, very well, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you for your indulgence. I'll not take more than three minutes. You have been told in the governor's response, and for, in the interest of that, I'm not pointing out to the specific page, you've been told that the DG has been absent in only two out of the nine cabinet meetings. Yet, they say that the DG has abdicated his responsibility. Are those two defenses compatible or are they not inconsistent with each other? They are contradicting each other and the DG has been absent from cabinet uh, meetings since May okay. as per his son affidavit and uh, uh, the evidence that he gave under oath to the assembly. Okay. And we took you through the WhatsApp, the screenshots of the WhatsApp groups, and your allegation as per the motion was that the, the DG was the governor condoned in subordination by, de, by demeaning the DG in, in front of his subordinates, junior staff. That is true. The governor in a defense will confirm that a defense is that this group was not just for junior officers, what that means, subcounty means chief officers, but also for members of the public. Correct? That's correct. What is your comment on that? That makes more the matter more grave because if the governor can use such ones on a dingy uh, in front of members of the public, then it is very unfortunate. So it, 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 makes, it, it aggravates the situation. Yes. It makes an already bad situation worse. Yes. Okay. Information, information, your closing remark. What would you like to say? Or what would you want the Senate to do to the people of Meru? I'll pray to this uh, honorable house to listen and uh, interrogate the evidence that the assembly has submitted and make uh, their decision based on the evidence that they have adduced. Because last time, from the report of the Senate, uh, the Assembly was told that uh, we did not prove our case, and therefore uh, I asked the Senate to save the people of Meru from the problems um, they are facing. And you confirm that you have evidence running into 448 pages in our volume 2? Yes, I confirm. Very well. Uh, that is all in examination in chief, Honorable Speaker. Thank you for your indulgence. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Council for Governor. You may now proceed to do your cross-examination. Uh, Council, before you start, maybe by indication, uh, how much time do you think you will require to do the cross-examination? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir, for record purposes, my name is Elias Mutuma, Council representing the Governor. I note that uh, the witness that has just uh, left the stand has taken close to four hours in examination in chief for parity of arms and uh, to ensure that I impeach each and every allegation and also to have time to play some of the videos that uh, are going to uh, disagree with some of the assertions, I will not need less than two and a half hours to do my close examination. It's only fair that uh, the governor is given a chance to defend herself through cross-examination. It is what she came here to do, uh, Honorable Speaker, sir. Two and a half hours 
uh, in the minimum. You have two hours. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Mawira, good evening. Good evening, Council. You are the mover of this motion. Yes, I am. That saw the governor get impeached at the county assembly. You have accused the governor of misappropriation and misuse of county resources. Specifically, you accuse the governor of among other things, embezzling county funds through our sisters, namely Rose Kenya, Guantai, Miriam Guantai, brother Kenneth Guantai, Murangeri, brother-in-law Nefat Kenya, and the nephew <coughs> to the governor, governor's husband, that is Edwin Motuma Murangeri. Those you call them the governor's relatives. Is that your position? Yes. Confirm 